Alaska is a beautiful and massive state. I've never personally been there, but I picture it as huge swaths of wilderness, much of it untouched by man with bears, elks, and wolves roaming. And then, of course, the harsh elements I would think would be your biggest threats when you're in the state, but they're not at all. Alaska also has many established urban settlements, as well as communities so remote that you can only access them by plane. And in these places, you find the most dangerous animal of them all, people. I'm Andrew Fitzgerald, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of Scary Mysteries. You guys have let me know in the comments that you love when we cover mysteries from each state. So here's another one for you. We hope you enjoy it. Before we dive in, please remember to subscribe if you haven't. And if you want more stories from each and every state, then check out our Every Town series that comes out each and every Friday, where we bounce around and check out some of the craziest stories from towns all throughout the U.S. In today's video, we're going to look into some crazy mysteries from our northernmost state. Mysteries that have captured the attention of the world because of how disturbing they actually are. Here are five unsolved mysteries from Alaska. Number five, 1972 twin engine Cessna disappearance. There's no easier way to get everyone's attention than to involve very important people into a mystery. As such, the mind-blowing case of the missing twin-engine Cessna sparked widespread interest about Alaska's version of the infamous Bermuda Triangle. Between Anchorage and Juneau in the south, to Barrow, which is now renamed Utkavik, along the north coast, lies the so-called Alaskan Triangle. Like its tropical cousin, the Bermuda Triangle, this area of the state is filled to the brim with all kinds of stories about people disappearing without a trace, and this story could be one of the most controversial. It was the 1972 general election, and state representative Nick Begich had decided to ask support from what was then the House Majority Leader and Louisiana Congressman, Hale Boggs. The later obliged on October 16th of that same year, he and Begich boarded a small twin-engine Cessna plane. They were bound for the state capital of Juneau. And somewhere along their route, the plane lost contact with ground support. Almost immediately, a joint force consisting of the Coast Guard, the Navy, and the Air Force launched a massive search and rescue operation. For more than a month, authorities combed almost every inch of the expansive forests mountain peaks and frozen tundra of the Alaska Triangle. Despite their gargantuan effort though, authorities couldn't locate even a single piece of wreckage from the plane or the remains of its passengers. The plane just basically disappeared without a trace. The search operation, which had become a major headline scoop at the time, was unsuccessful and they had no choice but to call it off. But if there's any silver lining from this tragedy, it was the fact that Congress had to pass a new law. This law specifically mandates all aircrafts flying in the United States to be fitted with emergency locator transmitters, or ELTs. And with this, it would be easy for search and rescue operators to locate downed planes, and hopefully they'll be there in time to get the passengers to safety. Number four. 1995 Disappearance of Erin Gilbert It's been said that life is full of what-ifs. And many of these what-ifs could have made huge differences in our lives. For Stephanie Gilbert Juarez, she could still remember clearly how this played out in her family. On July 1st, 1995, Stephanie's younger sister, Erin Gilbert, went on a first date to the Girdwood Forest Fair in Girdwood, Alaska. The 24-year-old had been living with her father in San Francisco before and decided to move in with her sister's family on the Eldmendorf Air Force Base, which is now called the Joint Base Eldmendorf-Richardson. On that day, Erin, whose plan was to enroll in cosmetology school, asked permission from her sibling to go out on a date with a man named David Combs. 
The two had met a few nights earlier at a local bar. As they were about to go out, Stephanie's four-year-old son told her aunt to bring a cell phone. Rather than listen to his pleading, the young woman insisted that she had no need for it. Had she listened, this story may have been told differently. And so, Erin left with her date and drove down to the Girdwood Forest Fair, which is surprisingly only an hour away from her sister's house. Witnesses later told the Alaska State Troopers that she and her date were last seen at a beer garden, and they reportedly left there around 6 p.m. After the excursion, the two walked back to Combs' car. However, they noticed that the lights had been left on, and this exhausted the battery, which then made it impossible to start the vehicle. The man then told his date to stay inside the car while he walked to a nearby friend's house to ask for help. He said he hiked for about two hours but returned later because he seemed to have gotten the wrong address. When he came back, he noticed that Aaron was gone. Combs told investigators that at that point he figured that his date returned to the fair. Surprisingly though, when he tried to start the car again, it worked. And so, he went back to the fair and searched for the woman until 1 o'clock in the morning the following day. Realizing that she might have gone back home on her own somehow, Combs went back as well. At around 7 a.m., he called Stephanie to check on her sister, and it was at that moment when they knew that Erin had vanished. They checked all the places that they knew Erin would have been to, but she was never there. They had to ask the state troopers for assistance, and an extensive search operation was immediately conducted, which involved dogs and helicopters. Unfortunately though, not one sign of Erin was ever found. In the midst of everyone's doubts and fears, police said that they have no reason to believe that there's foul play involved. So even to this day, Gilbert's family, friends, and loved ones continue to hope that she would one day return alive. Number three, One-Eyed Jack. There was a time in American history when many people chose to live the vagabond life. We sometimes call them hippies or free spirits, and their lifestyle became quite popular in the 70s and 80s. During these times, many people tended to sort of fade away from existence and were assumed to just have found their way somewhere unknown. As expected, A lot have been reported missing by their families and loved ones, and the story of this person is a great example of that. In September of 1978, a man later known as Jesse Burt Bishop stopped to give a ride to a hitchhiker. Bishop described his new passenger as having a hippie-like appearance, which included long hair and a beard. But the thing that really stood out was his eye patch worn over his left eye. In his account, Bishop said he examined the hitchhiker's driver's license and it said that he came from Oregon and was only 32 years old. The man had a destination in mind, but when he learned that the driver was headed for Alaska, he decided to accompany him on the long drive. During the trip, Bishop and his passenger, we now call One-Eyed Jack, exchanged details. It was found out that Jack had once worked as a logger, which explains the eye patch that covers the result of a logging accident. He also worked as a car salesman in Colorado and as a car washer. After a couple of days of being together on the road, Bishop then suddenly attacked, strangled, and stabbed his passenger to death. Then he dumped the lifeless body in the nearby woods off the Alaskan highway. It would take over a year before the victim's remains were discovered by a talk resident in August of 1979. Authorities found skeletal remains scattered along the roadside, suggesting that it was ravaged by scavenging animals. The ensuing investigation ultimately led police to identify Bishop as the prime suspect in the killing. And at this time, the accused was already in custody in Nevada for a different charge. When asked why he killed Jack, he simply answered, he was getting on my nerves. 
Bishop was eventually convicted for the man's murder. He later died in prison in 2003 while serving the sentence for the crime. While many of us would think that the case was already over, it was far from it. Curiously, despite Bishop's extensive details about the life of his victim, he never bothered to learn his full name. The fact that Jack's driver's license was never found just made the mystery more pervading. As such, the deceased, who is also known as One-Eyed Jack Doe, remains unidentified for 43 years and counting. As expected, many were wondering who exactly is this person and where was he going? Did the killer really have no other motive aside from being annoyed? It's likely these questions will never get answered. Number 2. 1978 Murder of Shelley Conley Crimes happen all the time, and when they occur, we immediately hope for the perpetrators to get caught and put in jail. But what if you have already waited decades without any results? Would you still hope for justice to prevail or just give up? Shelley Conley was born and raised in Alaska. The girl planned on going to cosmetology school, and she was described as petite, spunky, and loved to party. On January 7, 1978, the 16 year old made plans to hang out with friends. And at that time, most party goers would meet at a particular spot called Chilkoot Charlie's Bar, located in Anchorage, Alaska, where this young lady was also known as Snow. On that same evening, she was reportedly seen leaving the establishment with a group of men. This was supposedly the last time she was seen alive. On the following morning, a group of tourists found her lifeless body thrown down a steep embankment above the Alaska Railroad tracks just past McHugh Creek. It was a horrifying sight to behold. Drag marks were found indicating that she was pulled to the edge of the roadside before being thrown down the embankment. Medical examiners, meanwhile, determined that she was raped and beaten. She died after having suffered a blunt force impact to her abdomen, as well as exposure to the extreme cold weather. Given the circumstances, police ruled her death as a homicide. An investigation was made, but with no further evidence to work with, Authorities had no choice but to put the case on hold for many years. But then, 41 years after the incident, an unknown DNA trace found from Conley's body was submitted to Parabon Nanolabs in the hopes of finding out who was behind the 1978 murder. Results from the DNA testing later confirmed that Donald McQuaid, who was 21 years old at the time of Conley's murder, matched the suspect's DNA profile. It can also be confirmed that he lived in Alaska in 1978. Investigators then contacted McQuaid regarding the murder, but he initially denied having any involvement with the victim. A few days later, his statement changed, and this time he said that he only had sexual intercourse with Conley. To make sure they had gotten the right match, detectives worked on the discarded DNA samples from the suspect. And after further testing, they were able to confirm that indeed the DNA profile taken from the crime scene matched exactly to the ones recently recovered from Quaid. And so, recently, on August 30th, 2019, the 64-year-old was then arrested. A month later, a grand jury indicted the accused on murder charges for killing Shelley Conley back in 78. Justice may have taken a long time, but Conley's family and friends were more than relieved to finally know the man who was responsible for the girl's untimely death. Number 1. Disappearances at the Alaska Triangle Whether you're an avid alien conspiracy theorist an armchair detective, or even just the guy who loves everything that is cryptic, you probably have tried finding out the mystery behind the Bermuda Triangle, an area where people, planes, and ships supposedly vanish without a trace. But the Bermuda Triangle isn't the only one of its kind. 
And as mentioned in the prior story, in Alaska, they have what they call the Alaskan Triangle. Like much of the state, the vast triangular expanse of land contains some of the most rugged, unforgiving, and sometimes perilous terrains on this side of America. So it's not surprising then that people oftentimes go missing within it. And what's shocking is that most of them go missing without a trace. Well, you might not have heard of all of them. Some of the most remarkable disappearance cases include the vanishing of a U.S. Air Force plane. In 1950, C-54 Skymaster left Anchorage bound for Minnesota. Carried on it were 34 servicemen, eight crew members, three engineers, and two civilians. As it is always protocol, the plane should have been making regular radio contact with a nearby station, however, all communication from the C-54 got lost shortly after it took off. When the plane failed to make contact, the U.S., together with the Canadian Air Force, sent more than 75 search and rescue aircrafts to find the missing transport plane. However, it was all to no avail. The plane and its passengers were never seen again. Countless individuals have also succumbed to the mystery of the Alaska Triangle. Just recently, a man named Frank Manano was reported missing from his home in Nanana. Nanana, which is located around 50 miles west of Fairbanks, sits right at the heart of the dreaded triangle. The family of the 69-year-old reported him missing in August of 2020. They surmised that he became lost in the woods and yet they couldn't believe it at the same time considering that the man was a very capable survivalist. Almost as perplexing as the alarming population of missing persons are the theories that surround the so-called Alaska Triangle phenomena. One states that the area is home to massive swirling energy vortexes. Electronic tests conducted found higher intensities of magnetic irregularities, and this reportedly affects human behavior and emotion. Explorers and adventurers alike recount feeling disorientated and experience audio hallucinations while treading the triangle. Native American tribes in the area mention the Kushtaka, a shape-shifting cryptid that stalks the wilderness looking for its prey. And what is a mystery if it doesn't involve UFOs? Apparently, there are several unidentified objects seen flying around the area. These alien-like aircrafts would supposedly harass unsuspecting planes up to the point that they would take them along to unknown places. The possibilities are endless, but one thing is for sure. Alaska's wilderness is the last place you want to get lost in. So that's going to do it for today's video. Go check us out on Patreon, where we have exclusive and even darker videos. And there you can gain access to a huge library of videos you won't find anywhere else, plus much more. We appreciate the support, and thanks for tuning in. Be safe, and we'll see you soon.